Okay, should be all set. Okay, hang on a sec. <clears throat> oh, did we lose Jeff? Hang on. There he's back. All right, sorry about that. No uh, I had to, I had to switch a setting, uh, and that made me restart it. So uh, I was just going to share my screen before we started, and it, this is a new computer, so I gotta <laughs> edit it. Are you able to share? Or do I have to give you permission? Uh, hang on one second. I I think I might be okay. You should be good. I've got everybody able. All right. Here you go. It works. Okay. All right. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order. It is 7.07 .07 p.m. on Thursday, February 23rd, 2023. This is a meeting of the Grand Island Conservation Advisory Board. Um, we have uh, first on our agenda, the consent agenda. We're going to table that until next meeting, or uh, if somebody joins us later, we can come back to that at that point where we have five members present. Um, so that means the first thing up for today, um, is, Diane has some information about the Arbor Day event coming up. Well, actually, I don't have any information, but I wanted to raise the issue. Um, nothing at this point is being planned and we've been doing it now for several years. So I feel like something should occur this year. Um, I know Paul and Suzanne and I have, you know, worked the last few years together to get something going. It might be nice if somebody else, uh, stepped forward to work on that. I don't, I don't know if, um, let's see, last year, we obviously did the program down at the Nike base, walk the trails. We have the program about the tree inventory. Um, I haven't heard from anyone like from the rec department, if they want to walk trails again, I know they're doing a big event, um, March 5th. Are you yep. all aware of that? Yep. This and so I know that Paul and I have been asked to lead some walks, but there's a lot of other events going on, which is great. Um, the other I, thing I do have that on the agenda too. So if you wanted to okay. add that to this, we could. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. Number four. Um, it's up on the website and the Facebook and everything. If some of you aren't familiar with it, it's a bunch, it's like an open house with some rec programs and guided trail hikes. The Golden Age Center is going to be selling chili and uh, chicken soup, I think. Um, there's a scavenger hunt. Uh, so anyway, that's going on on March 5th. Um, the other thing I wondered, Tom, do you know if usually in April, right around Arbor Day and Earth Day, there's a, a Grand Island-wide cleanup. Is Has that date been set? Do you know? 
It has not. I'll have to, I'll check with, I know Dick Crawford okay. was in on that and it's the Chamber of Commerce usually. Oh, helps. right. The Ro- Chamber, it's, yeah. It's like Dick, the Chamber and the Rotary Club, I think, are the three that really, uh, right. that spearhead that. So I'll reach out to them. Um, and I think what we did last year, we, what did we do? We didn't want the two to conflict. So I think we had them on two separate days. Is that- yeah. I think yeah, so. I think that's what happened. So we want to keep that in mind and find out a date. Um, the other thing that um, the tree committee hasn't met recently, and I think they're due to meet pretty soon. Um, they might want to do something this year. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see. They've they've postponed a couple of meetings. So um, any ideas out there? We could also, it would be nice to plant a few trees somewhere. Um, Along those lines, Diane, I um, donated to Arbor Day this year so that I could get some free um, trees and shrubs to plant, which I'm gonna be doing at my school. Um, but they can't take all of them. And I would really like to donate the ones that we can't use at the school to the town, um, which are likely to be delivered in April or there, thereabouts. Okay. Um, are they seedlings? Are they real small? Yeah, they're, they're real small. Um, there's a Norway spruce. Um, so that would definitely require some space <laughs> for its mature size and then we've oh, got sure. yeah some red buds and washington hawthorns okay. i think there's one or two of each of those but i can't remember now something uh that you responded to liz that i sent around was the buffer in the bag program if we apply for that the application is due sometime in march we and that's designed to give you a bundle, of, I think it's 25, maybe 25 seedlings that should go along a creek to help hold the, you know, prevent erosion and so forth. And a couple of years ago, Suzanne and I looked into planting a bunch of things at the bridge on the linear bike path, because that particular spot keeps getting eroded. We never followed through and actually did it. So that's one spot where that might work. And the other one I was thinking of was uh, doing some plantings at the new bridge and the Nike base trail. They'd they'd have to be ones that could survive a few years of flooding. Um, And I think we'd want some good advice to whether it's worth planting there because it does flood pretty badly. Um, Any other thoughts from anybody? I think those are both great locations. And the one at the linear bike trail floods too. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, I know it does. But but there's not a lot of current there. I think there's a whole lot more current at at, at the bridge at the Nike base. Right, yeah. So that that one, I would think if we're going to do that, you might want to put rock or something in front of it, even a log just, you know, for the first couple of years, just to keep it from not washing out when it floods. Because most of the time it's not underwater very long, right? A couple of days. Yeah, I think we need to get some kind of expert in there to give us some advice about about planting there. The bank's pretty high, though. Yeah, it is. So, so I mean that that can't flood for more than a a day or two, I would think. I mean the the other area might flood, but there is definitely some higher banks there. The other thing I should mention is, I, you know, over a year ago we planned to dedicate a couple of trail signs in the Nike Base Park. One to Dorothy Westhafer and one to Ron Rezebeck. And I followed up recently and finally um, 
we're moving on that. Um, the rec department, uh, Tom Cicery, if I say his name correctly, has ordered a sign for the bridge in honor of Dorothy. And he's and he got any anyway, he got permission to do that and to order a sign for I think it's the White Trail uh, in honor of Ron Rezebeck. So um, because I agitated a little bit, it's now going to get done. So, and I think they wanted, <laughs> I think Pete had in mind to dedicate them over Arbor Day or Earth Day. So um, that's another little wrinkle in it that it would be nice to do something maybe at the Nike base another year. So those can be dedicated and, um, you know, I don't, any other thoughts from anybody? Sorry, this is taking so long. No, I think those are, are you know, it, it's a long time coming for the dedication. And I think to have an event, um, you know, that would be good. And, you know, it's got to, if it coincides with that time of the year, I feel like, you know, April is always one of those iffy months, but like, you know, right. even if it was into May, into May That's you true. know what I mean? Like, you know, um, I think that would be all right. I, you know, I know that April this year, Earth Day and Arbor Day, I have, I'm, I'm out of town. I got, my kids got out of town stuff going on, but um, I'm thinking that if we can just coordinate a tree planting, I could probably garner some interest, even if it's just, uh, you know, my family, the green showing up to plant trees, but uh, I can uh, let some of my students in school know and they would, they would, um, uh, they probably would be able to at least um, help us out a little bit um, as far as, you know, getting the placement and the labor and stuff like that. Um, uh, they like to do that stuff. So um, just, so, we, okay. we gotta, we, we gotta set a date. I don't know, like coordination, like if we were to, um, it, you know, if we have volunteers to, you know, set all that stuff up, I know you guys have done it for a long time and we're so appreciative of that. Um, but getting, you know, the, uh, the party planning committee, is that a subcommittee of the <laughs> conservation advisory board um, to set this up and get it rolling? Um, you know, it's, I mean, it's almost March, you know, this, I know. this time next week, it's March. It's less, you know, it's a week away right now. So right. Um, normally we're, we're getting close. Yeah. Normally <laughs> we've started earlier. What, so it sounds like maybe we should plan a date in eight, late April or early May to dedicate the signs and also plant, find some spot where we can plant a few trees at the Nike base maybe and have it all in that one spot again. Yes. What and you, you know, if, um, I think both spots are great. And so for me to decide like it, I, I hike both trails probably an equal amount. Like I've been to both places and I think they're both good spots and you're right about the flooding. I always, I always look around the forest and, and look at trees, but I'll let the tree committee decide. I'll, the red maples seem to do okay in those flooded areas because there's always a lot of them uh, in the areas that are wet year after year. But um, I'll leave that up to the, to the pros, um, you know, something that's going to grow and hold those banks steady. Well, uh, I'll look into that. It that may not be may not be able to be accomplished by April, because they know the deadline to apply for it is sometime in March, and I don't know what the uh, how long it takes for them to approve these or whatever. So I'll look I'll look into that. I'm just saying um, that we, might, that might not be what we need can plant for it like an Arbor Day celebration. Gotcha. Tom, when, would there be any money in the coffers to like plant just a few um, like decent sized trees maybe? Like, you know, they run probably like, like 150, one 150 in there, you know, just to plant a few of them along the, uh, like near the bridge, ones that'll take hold. 
Um, if we can come up with a plan, I don't think it would be difficult. We have the trust and agency funds floating out there that there's, you know, where the rec fees go in. You know, we have sources that we could find funding for a few trees if we've got a plan. So okay. I think so okay. too. I think I think Dick Crawford pretty much committed to the fact that we could plant some trees this year too. So um hopefully his committee will be meeting soon. And um why don't I look into finding a date that might work? Oh uh Jeff, you're busy in early May too, probably, right? Which doesn't, uh, so, mean, which doesn't mean we couldn't still use some of the high school kids, right? Yeah, so, uh, you know, May is hit or miss. And uh, yeah, exactly that. Like if there's an activity, um, you know, I, it, I, it's not necessary because it's a community event, you know, that I be there. But looking right now at May, the only thing that I don't have on is track meets, but I don't know that schedule yet. So, okay. um, but it's, it's a catch, you know, I'll be available one of, one of the two weekend days. And, um, you know, okay. uh, I, if it's possible for me to be there, I will be there. Okay. Well, why don't I investigate, um, with Dick Crawford and with, the Nike base, if there's some places they would like a few trees planted there, if not on the riverbank, uh, creek bank. Um, and uh, I may ask for some help then. <laughs> but I will I will follow through on a couple of these ideas and, and let you guys know, okay? Thank you, Diane. You're welcome. Where's the party group, by the way? <laughs> I don't know. It seems like if we're planning a lot of activities that like there should be a, uh, <laughs> uh, a yeah, subcommittee of, right. of planners who, who excel at this. Um, you know, it's something that I, I have little experience with, um, you know, outside of a, a science fair, maybe, but that's yeah, about okay. it. OK, I'm D done. Diane, just just for my schedule on that one, it looks like. I'll probably be fishing the spring derby, lots of derby. So it's the 5th through the 14th. Say it May. again. Uh, the 5th through the 14th of May. You're busy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Paul. I mean, again, I don't have to be there either. But, or, or if the weather's bad, you know, I could be there right there. So I can't get out in the boat. Okay. Okay, thanks, guys. I can help as well. Course. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. Sure. And I have a question, which um, I don't remember being answered on the email thread about it, but the buffer in a bag program, I was just wondering if there is any um, publicizing it so that we get more, more takers than if it were not publicized. Um, well, right. You, you did say that it certainly could be put up on. Um, hmm. I'm, it could be put up on our page, but I don't think a lot of people look at that, do they? It right. could be maybe it should go to Isle de Grand or um I mean we can always if if you guys post something on the page, we can always get it to Rhonda to get it on the Facebook page. And we can also do um notifications when we can set things so that when you go to the site things will pop up and be right there to be seen. Plus we can get it on the, the calendar. So there's ways that we can get it more exposure than it simply just being on the conservation advisory board page. Okay. How about Liz, would you be willing to follow up with Rhonda? Sure. Because it is open to private residences too. So that's, that would be good to- Wait till, wait till next week though, cause she's yeah, out of town. I was gonna <laughs> say, Rhonda's away until next week, right? Okay, so once again, then um, posting on the um, the town site, maybe the, the main page or like a news section linked to Facebook. Or yeah, I mean, so or we can we can do both. I mean, the main like what we can do is if you put something on the conservation advisory board page, we can create like alert type things that as soon as okay. you go to the page, they pop up. Yeah, because like our main page is pretty static other than like if we put the calendar up 
but we can get those things that'll pop up and then we can put whatever we want on the Facebook page too, which honestly okay. has, I think, far more traction than the the, the website proper. Right. Um, and then I think there was a, another place that you recommended that it could be posted. Am I wrong about that? I'm, I'm I, we get, um, oh, um, what about Isle de Grand? I don't know. Just an idea. Yeah. Yeah. We'd have to look, they charge for advertising. So we'd have to look into oh, that. Oh, okay. It's not like a public. Right. Wouldn't it be a press release? I, I could check. I don't know. I think they typically charge, but maybe they'll do something like that. You, well, honestly, we've put other we've put other things on like announcements for events. Right, and we can always do like a letter to the editor too. That's free, but again, that's something that people have to go look for, not something that that's right, right up in front. So, right, okay. So, Liz, let me know if you have any trouble following up with that. Okay, I will. And then something else occurred to me. Um... Oh, you said that it was open to anybody. So then, okay. That, yeah, that takes care of that. I think I was under the impression originally that it was that only, you know, certain protected areas of creeks or whatever were, you know, like landowners of EEDs or something like that were eligible or more likely to qualify or whatever. But I think, I think if you reread it and I'll reread it myself, yeah. it said both um, public and private. Because a lot of homeowners have, you know, creeks that go through their property. So, but it's limited in terms of the number of people they're going to. They're going to award it to. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It, so I'm right. thinking that there's going to be some qualifying factors, but but it should be publicized for to the public in general. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Great idea. All right. Um, I, did you have any, like, I'll skip down to the, the March recreation event. I know you talked about all the stuff that's going on uh, that they already, did you have anything else to add? I don't have anything else, no. All right. That looks like a lot of fun. Go join, um, you know, Paul and Diane on a hike around the Nike base. That would be, that sounds like fun to me. <laughs> There's going to be snowshoeing and all sorts of other stuff going on there. So it's going to be a good, yeah. it's going to be a good event. It's the parks department, yeah. the rec department and the golden age center all pitching in to, to kind of showcase what we've got over there. Great. Nice. All right. And then um, earlier this week, Tuesday, we had um, um, an open space committee meeting i got to join in on that one because i'm on a break and so um you know it's uh definitely a, a well-needed committee it's its own um entity at this point it's a it's a big part of the time we spend on the conservation board and, you know it's a big part of our meetings it takes up a lot of time so it's good that this committee is meeting and getting input um and i think uh, and I'll let uh, Paul and Diane speak too. Um, there was discussions about, um, you know, getting together, um, you know, kind of what we want, like in a general RFQ to see about, um, you know, exactly uh, what organizations that do this kind of thing, you know, what do they offer? What do they bring to the table? How much are these things going to cost? Um, but, you know, and, it, and beyond that, it was just a vision of, you know, what types of things should, you know, would you expect to, to come from uh, the plan itself? Uh, and so you guys have anything else to add? Paul, go ahead. If you want to say anything. Paul? Are you? Um... Yeah, no, I got it. I, I somehow. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I basically, you know, Diane's trying to, or she did not trying. She got a bunch of different people from a bunch of different groups, which is great. Um, so, and the people that were there this week were very interested in, you know, seeing what we can do to protect 
some uh, properties or at least um, get some ideas. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think we've made a few steps in the right direction. And I think once we get a little bit further, we're going to look for some uh, consultant um, to assist. And I think we're going to, once we get a really solid idea, then I, I think we're going to go for, uh, or try to get some public input, right? Yeah. So we were reviewing most of what we've been doing so far is just getting our feet wet, letting other people know all the, the maps that are out there, all the work we did on the open space inventory. Um, so you know, Diane went over a bunch of that uh, in the first meeting and then, you know, a little bit more because she worked with Kevin and company in the town. And um, since we're on site this week, she, she brought up, you know, the map with the parcels. Um, so I, I think we're we're definitely making progress. Yeah, thank you. we only had two meetings, so it's yeah, we've only had two. And we've also been looking at some open space plans from other towns just to see what they're up to. Um and we're gonna start looking at some RFQs to give us an idea of how to best write one. Um yeah, and it's a great group of people with a lot of good ideas. So uh, we're meeting once a month right now and um, moving along. And I guess that's enough to say right now. All right. Um, let's see. So uh, I guess that brings us to the project updates. Uh, I'm going to let um, the, I know Tom, if you have anything, uh, the I did get an updated plan for, and I'll still call it Lighthouse Point until it gets a name. I saw River Oaks Community. So I, I saw some, you know, I, I hope they don't take offense that we're calling it that because that one was a plan from a long time ago. But when I say it, I, I know that, you know, the uh, members of the Conservation Board know exactly where I'm talking about. So um, it's just easy for me to say that. Um, so do we want to start with, yeah, you, do you have any more info on, uh, on Lighthouse Point? No, um, I want to say I, I was with John when you sent that text asking for the name and I, he didn't think there was one. I want to say it's going by Gulf View Properties now, but I could be wrong. Um, I still haven't seen anything. I haven't heard from Frank or Sean Hopkins. So that one's still just kind of in the hopper while they're trying to figure it out. I suspect rightfully so they're um, you know, trying to figure out what, if any impact the Radisson project had on their plan. So. Okay. So this is the updated plan. This is much different than, uh, so I'm, you guys see that on the screen, by the way. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, and so like right here is Whitehaven and over here is the East river road. Yep. There's, there's a, there's a road of single family homes. Actually, I can't have a late, late point. Uh, there, there's kind of right here, there's a, a row of single family homes and then it kind of extends into here. Uh, let me jump to the end. Cause I think I have the older one up here too. Uh, I do. Okay. So uh, this there was a lot in a little space that, you know, and I'm looking at the differences from, you know, here uh, to there, the new one that I just, you know, that was just put in our, our mailbox recently. A um, little more green space, but I'm going to zoom in here at the bottom so you guys kind of know, right? Three two story multi house buildings, uh, three unit of three unit apartment, second floor, uh, six, two story, six, is that, oh man, is that eight unit, eight unit apartments? Yeah. And then six, two story, 12 unit apartments, uh, 39 single family homes and 62 four unit townhomes are planned on that parcel. And here's another
there's another sheet of of the way it looks and so it looks to me like they're staying off of you you, you see this right here the zoning's not right for that still right it's well, that's it hasn't changed that's not their property that's the existing parcel that's owned by the owner of south point and yeah that's that's a that parcel is already zoned business and then if you go just what would be west of that to where those apartments are um yeah right go back back to the right to your right oh. no nope, for this, the next one over so that this nope. is the this is east river that's east river is... so the white parcel there is owned by somebody else immediately okay. yeah that one's owned by somebody else if you go to that next next chunk to the left there okay that's the part that they're trying to that one yeah, so that chunk there is where they're talking about the rezone, where it's there's a chunk of that that zone business okay. that they want rezoned to R2. So like okay, that. and it looks yeah. Those look like the big apartment buildings right here. All right. So I mean uh, we'll 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 see. I I just I I know it, it looks different from what I've seen before. Um, they did keep this this row here of single family homes. Um, but I'm sure a lot depends on what's going on over here. But it seems like you, they update this often, right? When did you get that? This is dated February fifteenth. Because I'm looking through my emails and I know I have everything from my actual mailbox, but they may have sent mm -hmm. it. Jeff, do you do you now get this sent to you digitally? No, I um took a picture of it, Diane. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so so you know, I um I got a note taking okay. program that I use, and and I've been trying to take pictures of some important stuff. Like I said, I don't know where it is, but I do know, and I and it might, and I don't think it's on this property. I think it it might be just to the west of this. There is a an EED somewhere. Um, so I always, you know, I'm, I'm always looking at it just to make sure that there's no EEDs and, um, you know, this, this design looks, it looks you, different than you, the last one, except for this part. <laughs> and you think there is an EED in there? I, I do not. Um, I, okay. I think it's, I, th I think it's down here somewhere, uh, okay. um, you, you know, to the, uh, west of it. I don't think it's on the property, but, um, you know, I, I want to make sure of that. Uh, I, I the, the EEDs are all just, I have a map of them and it's yeah. not necessarily o overlaid onto the lots. And so I'm never sure, but, um, I, I think it's over here somewhere. We are working. We're hoping to get some new, uh, copiers in the near future that will hopefully make it easier to get a lot of this stuff scanned in and sent electronically. Um, so, okay, two questions. The first one being that th this is not yet posted on the, the town's website, correct? I'm looking for it as we speak and I okay. don't see it, but. All right. And then also, um, what's the specific reason for the um, requested rezone to R2? They don't, because they want to put residences there, not business. Okay. They, like, a, like more of a hamlet. Um, it's yeah. It's exists now. It is. It's designated as a hamlet. Oh. So it was already zoned. I want to say it's actually the one is B three maybe. Okay. The piece that's there, which really isn't consistent. But when the town board received the rezoning request, we sent it to the long range planning committee, which their opinion was that it should not be rezoned because the, co the the comprehensive plan designates that as a hamlet, which would need those business parcels to help, you know, kind of support the hamlet designation. So they had gone back and forth with kind of trying to reduce it, trying to flip it, trying to make it work. Um, but, and that's where it kind of fell off. And I'm looking, like I said, Jeff, through everything I have to see if I even have this and, I don't see it, and it's definitely not on the website. So, 
Yeah, because I didn't see anything new for it when I looked this afternoon either. So, okay. Okay. It, it's titled Exhibit 1 PDD Development Concept Plan dated December 14th, 2022. So this is, they're asking for a PDD here. So I'm going to look. I want to say I knew they were going to, but I don't know if they went to the planning board kind of for a for a um I think the planning board, I think they canceled the February meeting. And so that they did, but what I'm what I'm thinking is they may have just sent um they may have gone to them first, which is why I don't have it. Because I know in talking with Pete, he mentioned that they were gonna try and do a P a PDD there, but I haven't seen it yet. But again, the PDD they're applying for it, but it's essentially looking for an end around the existing business parcel. Okay. All okay. Right. So uh, for purposes of the minutes, can I just get clarification that originally it was said they were looking for a, a rezone to R2. So is that what is is are they looking for R2 or PDD or what uh straighten me out? <laughs> it was R2 and they didn't get it approved. So now I think ah. they're switching to try to get a PDD. Thank you. That's the way it seems to me with what they wrote here in the uh, um, memo dated to the planning board, January 9th. Yeah, I wonder. So I'm going to see if I can find that stuff in the planning board agenda. So then my question would be why a PDD as opposed to a Hamlet designation so that they could get the residential and the business? Correct. We don't, I mean, there's, there's essentially no zoning classification that we have that permits mixed use. So anywhere that they would want to put truly mixed use at this point basically requires an applicant to seek a PDD. Gotcha, thank you. So, so Tom, every time these developers, I mean, it looks like every time we look at a site plan, they want to change, right? But, you know, New York State's pushing hard for going green. Is yeah. there any way we can push these guys a little bit to include solar on, you know, 10% of their roofs or something? Well, we are a climate smart committee. We are the second, well, we were the second in, in you know, uh, Erie County. Um, we, we should be pushing for, you know, giving some of the consumers options to have solar. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, I will say one of the, the advantages of kind of forcing them into a PDD is it brings them within the incentive zoning where the town can have a little more leverage to ask for stuff like that. I mean, because on a new build, you're putting a new roof on. If you put the solar panels on, you got the electricians, you got the roofers. I mean, everybody's there. It's all new, right? So, and and I mean, honestly, they keep, pushing you know the state's pushing going green going green going green but i don't see a single builder going green even even starting to think about going green. no and that's you know that was like if you go back to amazon that was something that we had worked out with them in that they were originally not going to do it but ultimately when well it never got to the vote but they were going to put solar on the roof and that was at the request of the okay. town because we well, had the leverage to do that. So we, we requested them, but I never heard that they were going to do it. They oh, no, they had said we would think about it. I no, part of their solar. plan, part of the plan that they were asking us to approve had solar. Oh, great. Didn't happen, but I mean, that's okay. It, it, at least we got a step in the right direction. Right. So, you know, do we have the same thing for the long road well i guess we can discuss that when that one comes up right yeah i mean we still it, yes and no because with the long road one it, instead of applying for a pdd which gives um the town more leeway to i guess try and negotiate things like that the plan that was submitted for 2780 long road this time around their position is it's a it's a as of right use that they don't need any variances and that they don't need to have um, the parcel rezoned so 
their position is no, it checks all the boxes. We don't need to be, we don't need to do anything. So I'm not saying I agree with that, but that's the position that they've taken. Okay. So I, um, I would then like to request Tom that, you know, if they've gone for a PDD here, we, we have some discussions with this builder about, you know, at least letting some of the houses have, uh, have solar on the roof. Well, I'd almost, I mean, frankly, I, the, the, it's going to be probably more difficult for them to do with the single family homes, but like the apartments would probably be something that you could push. Okay. I, I mean, just, just in general, right. I, I would, yeah. I would like to, I would like to, you know, the state's request is to go green. I mean, we're going to get rid of gasoline cars and everything. So they say, so I would like the town, you know, since we are a climate smart community, to to help push you know the, this green a little bit here so now i i did find that referral in the, the planning board minutes it is now just the river oaks residential community south side of whitehaven road at east river <laughs> so oh, i don't know if they have a name i think i mean i think they are trying to avoid lighthouse point but to to jeff's point initially that's the most uh identifying title you could give that parcel for the time being yeah i i think uh paul brings up some great points about the solar i'm finding out how efficient it is and i gotta think that if if they are going to be the landlords of apartment buildings that having electricity reduced to almost nothing would be in their favor if they're the ones charging the rent uh so i gotta think that it's it's gotta be a win on both sides um and i do right. think that it should it should definitely be brought up at some point in time but i know this one's far off because i know the last the uh, you know it always goes to a, the, this area here always goes to a public hearing and um it's usually a very interesting public hearing and, um, and i think and, they've just brought this to the the planning board as a concept plan at this point. I think they were just getting some initial feedback from the planning board about the rezoning and, and the conceptual idea of doing it as a PDD. Ultimately, when they made the actual application for a rezone, that would get a formal referral to you guys as well. So you'll have, we will have an opportunity, the, the conservation advisory board will have an opportunity to give uh I guess, official feedback to the town about the rezoning request if it makes it to the town board. And I guess just so, okay. you know, it's, uh, I'm just looking at the letter that they submitted with it. They reduced the size. They did increase the size of those residential lots that you see on the left side that run against uh, Timberlink and stuff. And then they're claiming, um, Minimum separation of the townhome buildings has been reduced from 60 to 30 to increase the depth of relevant lots. And then they're going to provide 22.14 acres of permanent open space, which is 33.8% of the project site that will remain undeveloped. And, and that's the grass between the building and the parking lot. Yeah, yeah pretty much. And it looks like it's pretty fully developed to me. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the definition is almost anything that's not yep. a roof is considered yep. open space. Anything that's not a roof or concrete. Yep, open space. And they even have a footnote here in the letter. Open space may include walkways, plazas, landscape areas and recreation areas, parking areas and vehicle access facilities shall not be calculated. So anything that's not a roof or a parking lot. Right. Not a roof or a parking lot is green space, right? But but clearly looking at this, there there is virtually no green space. They're trying, uh, yeah, they're trying to maximize. Yeah, I understand. Population density. How about that? That's a PC way of putting it, I guess. Yeah. I see they're working their way from, you know, uh, lower population density, more towards the established homes already. And then as you get closer to East River, it kind of gets higher density. You got you got kind of a gradient here, single family homes, patio homes, and then apartments. Yeah. So, and they uh, got they got a lot of pushback from that in the beginning about, you know, because the, the neighborhood, you can't tell from that, but anybody familiar with the area, those 
the ones to the left are essentially going to be in the backyards of, of uh, Timberlink in the River Oaks development there. So those houses will be, you know, backyard to backyard, but for uh, they're leaving, there's, they're going to leave like, it was like 20 feet of buffer in between where they weren't going to cut down the trees and stuff that were existing. But I mean, for the most part, they're, they're, they're on top of the existing homes. Okay. All right. So, well, I just wanted to bring this to everybody's attention and then um, obviously if this comes up more we'll discuss it more but i always leave it as an open place on our agenda just because of the developments that might happen but i think we're just waiting for the planning board to give their feedback for the concept plan before it goes any farther um and then uh you guys does any any other members have anything to comment on this one before i ask about the next one yeah i have a question the area you were just referencing that's 20 feet away and there's a buffer and it's it's right near Timberlink isn't that the area where you say the EED possibly is that's it's it's like up here and I, I'm not sure uh, I just know that the the reason I'm not sure is because the the overlay does not like I don't get lot numbers and so that is something that I'm going that we did check on years and years ago with the original lighthouse point plan where there was these huge apartment buildings and all, like this didn't exist. There was like big apartment buildings here all over the place. Uh, I remember having a discussion that there was an EED close to the property, but not on the property. Um, but I will definitely have to verify that um, because if it is, then, then that's, that's a whole other, that's a whole other thing that we'll have to uh, address. Jeff, I assume this is probably on our uh, open space inventory too, which is a pretty big piece of property. Yeah, I think I'll look at the maps we have and I'll I'll check about it too. But again, I mean, as we're developing these these big chunks, right, um, and we're losing you know large swaths of open space. Anything we can do to re reduce that green footprint. I mean, there's not a lot of, a big chunk of that property doesn't have a whole lot on it. Right. Huh? Yeah, I, I know where it is, but it's still it's still there available for animals and critters and stuff. So it, it'll be gone forever. Yeah, and it would be nice like to have like, an overlay of the you know any creeks or streams that might be in this area i feel like you know spicer creek is, is just to the north but then you got yep just on this side you got you got woods creek feeder streams you know to the northwest and then you got spicer creek feeder streams to the north um it would be interesting to see what the drainage uh on this piece of property is and then of course, there's always the septic tie-ins um, and, you know, the placement of this being way out on the flank of, of Grand Island, not towards the center, um, you know, the, um, you know, the capabilities of the uh, sanitary sewers um, and water treatment facilities in this area, like all of that stuff will probably need to be looked at. We, we know we have sewer overflows, right? So if you add all these, you just got a little bit more. Yeah, not exactly. In fact, the exact opposite. If this got approved, they would need to re they would need need to make improvements that would reduce the amount of overflows. That's a lot of the times that these things get done. We make improvements to the wastewater system that the town would have to wait many, many, many years to be able to make on our own. All right. Um, uh, so uh, I, I'm going to bounce around here, Tom. I'm going to, you know, the 2780 long road. And so I, I, I read a bunch of, of stuff from the, I think the planning board, and there was this big letter that they're preferring like uh, an option four over the um, 
over the environment uh, DEIS over the environmental impact statement. Like, so are they trying to get you guys not not to take the uh, environmental impact statement that you know is required with the positive declaration? They want you to do something different so they don't have to adhere to that. More or less, yeah. So, I mean, that what they want, there was a negative declaration back then. We're looking to renew it. They want us to basically just review the supplemental environmental impact statement that they've prepared and, and rubber stamp it saying that, yeah, we're good. Nothing has changed. Um, it, but that's not how the... I mean, is that how the process works? Like, yes and no. Effort? I mean, at this point, if, if nothing had changed, yes, that's how the process would work. And there were there were reasons that I can't get into too much that it was is far more beneficial for the town to have taken this than to have had them start. Um, from the beginning with a new plan that could have potentially triggered a, a brand new seeker review. Um, but to the extent things are, and that was the purpose. So the, the supplemental environmental impact statement and the process of what we're doing now is to kind of narrow down um, things that may have changed and really identify um, any current issues that they need to look into further compared to when this was done back in the 90s. So the board is doing that or consultants or who? All right. So a little bit of both. Procedurally, what happens is they had to put together their supplemental environmental impact statement. Right. So they put it together. They submitted it to us. And then what the town did was the town took their SEIS, and we hired um, professionals to review those and all this stuff. So if, on the website now, there's the, the geotech review. We've got a traffic, the stormwater, uh, air quality. I think we did noise and lighting. Yeah, there's noise. So we hired a bunch of different, well, they're all engineers in one way or another, to review <laughs> their thoughts on the applicant's position with respect to the other issues. And now we've got, so basically from here, they'll comment, they being the applicant gets to comment on what our people said and we work our way towards a final supplemental environmental impact statement that'll define what additional work, if any, that they need to do. I see, okay. So my question did have to do with that. Um, the geotech report, mm -hmm. which is, I think what you're referring to, you know, so you're saying that um, the Glenn group peer review document yep. has not been, has not received a reply yet by the applicant. No, it has not. Okay. So I have like a couple of questions based on that, which I don't know if you're going to have answers to or not, but it's worth Probably asking. Probably not, but I'll try. <laughs> um, how likely or usual is it for a document like this um, to be published to begin with? And because I'm thoroughly unfamiliar, but it looks as though based on their recommendations, there are 33 areas of the report requiring or recommending editing revision or, or provision of some missing item. And it seems like a lot of items to me. Is that usual or unusual? Um, I haven't done a lot of these, but getting stuff is usual. And I don't think I could categorize it as unusual that after 30 years, stuff's changed. I mean, I guess the issue with the, like the geotech report, that's one of the things that, that was updated. And that was a newer study like, Amazon or its cohorts, they did their own geotechnical studies. That's what got a lot of attention when people saw people out there. And yet they've still, like you said, identified a significant number of, of potential issues with the report. So, Right. Like core sample stuff, 
et cetera, that reading it over to me, it was concerning because it suggested that the applicant had not made provision for several very, very important foundational issues. Um, okay. Then the other question in, in specificity is there is um, a reference to the possibility of needing to, so in like a paragraph about excavating, it talks about the possibility of needing to do blasting. Do we know how likely that is at all? That we don't. Okay. Because it suggests the need for measuring vibration impact in you know, peripheral structures. That was an eyebrow raiser for me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Uh, I'm going to have to look a little closer at that too. Um, this is the, this is the first document of many. There's right now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Seven peer review documents have already been uploaded. The geotech, there is, uh, this one doesn't say what it is. Oh, there's the environmental one. There's traffic, uh, noise, air quality, storm water, and wastewater, or no, water distribution. Okay. Um, I'm thinking that we should probably take a closer look at those at <laughs> our next our next meeting, maybe. Um, there definitely seems like some stuff that, you know, if there if we do have concerns about what's in the documents, we should probably uh, have some type of um, official advisory letter go to the town board. Um, that, yeah, that's, that's very important stuff, Liz, and I feel like that's that's something that we should be weighing in on. So um, I'm going to look a little closer at that, and then I might send out some links, and we'll have to we'll have to do some homework before our next meeting. Um, yeah. The second one is there's an environmental impact one that was done by um, CC Environment and Planning. Yeah, Jeff, you might send a note out to the whole committee to review that before our next meeting to review some of those. I will Absolutely. say one of the references um, that I happened to write down here is page 32, not of the document, not of the peer review, but in the peer review, there is a reference to the applicants page 32 and it's talking about pavement design. Um, and that's that's concerning as well. It's It's actually saying like, if there's anything done um, if there's any like heavy haul on newly constructed roads or previously non-existent roads, they, they'll need to be um, backfilled or something like that in order to support them. And I, 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 that, that was just odd to me, but I am not, in, I'm obviously not in the business. <laughs> oh no, there, that's something that our, even our engineering department was all over. So basically, you know, when okay. you disturb, when you're disturbing virgin ground to put the roads in, then you put the roads in. They settle no matter what, but they settle much more quickly when you put the roads in and then you're using them to bring, you know, concrete trucks to pour the foundations and all the other stuff. So that's something that we've been on, you know, plus that you've got the the increased taxing to, you know, long road and the overpasses and stuff like that. But that's something that they were all about in the very beginning. Same thing with, I think, uh, I forgot the other project, but that's... That's one thing that that Bob and the engineering department are all over is recognizing because what happens is to the extent one of them, and I th the original Amazon plan, there was a road that ran from basically you could get or Amazon, I think was going to keep everything private, but now they want to dedicate a portion of that road to the town. So they're cognizant of that because then if they go and they build this, and it's the same thing with like uh Heron Point. Once those roads get dedicated to the town, it becomes our responsibility to repair them if they just put them in five years ago, but because they've had construction vehicles on them constantly for the last five years, mm -hmm. they've deteriorated as much as they would have over the course of 20 years. And now we've got to do the work to repair them. 
So that's something that they're keeping an eye on. Um, and that's been an issue with this, not just this project, but the projects that I've seen over the course of my three years. So interesting. Okay. Thank you. Tom, that's also plowing and salting and all that other stuff, right? Yeah. And that's, I mean, but that's, that's in the course. Like we always have, once they dedicate it, that's on us no matter what, but it's why do we have to deal with, why do the taxpayers proper have to deal with, you built this, you know, like I said, Heron Point, that's, that thing's been under construction for how many years now? But they, they the first thing they do is they go and put the road in. And then for the next three years of construction, it's big, heavy construction vehicles in and out of it every day that are wearing and settling that road faster than it would have. And then they dedicated the town and now something's gone wrong and we got to repair it. I mean, the plow trucks and stuff, once once it's dedicated, we have to do that stuff. But it's really the the, the true repairs to the roads that become a concern, that backfilling any significant damage that, that could result. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and thanks, Liz, for looking at stuff so carefully. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, as these, like, that's not something that I just was, uh, you know, perusing through. So I feel like if there's, if we're getting the results of some of these studies, we, we probably need to take a look at them and then look at the concerns, um, you know, concerns that we have, our, our committee might have, um, maybe, you know, our neighbors might have, um, you know, we, we, we probably should bring this up. So, uh, Tom can hear our concerns and take that with him to, um uh the meetings with the developers and the town board um so that we can uh make sure that you know some of these problems um are at least answers to the problems are found um you know blasting and in, in the back of my mind when, when liz said blasting i just you know you think about all of the loose sediments and sediment pollution and clogged waterways and you know i, I uh, on an island. So, I'm, I, you know, that's sitting in the back of my mind, but I'm, you're right, Liz, we're not in that business. Um, but, you know, we do have our concerns. So um, we should, we should probably do that at the next meeting. Does anybody else have anything about the warehouse? There's also like a sulfur pit on the grounds, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> sulfur pit. Hmm. Sulfur pit. Interesting. <laughs> um, naturally occurring. Yeah, that's what it looks like from the limited text about it. It it looks it said something about an artesian well, and there's sulfur that's going to be emanating from it, and I don't know. Yeah. It needs to be properly um, plugged up or sealed in order to avoid the you know the stench coming out all the time like niagara falls <laughs> <laughs> no comment <laughs> all right um okay so moving right along here the other ones i have i have heard nothing i do not know of any other developments south point river town gun creek any any changes any movement on those fronts tom nope not to my knowledge Rivertown's still doing the engineering. Um, Pete had spoken with them. They are going to make some changes. I think they were also looking to widen some lots and I think get rid of one of the one of the apartment buildings that would have been on the west, like along baseline, but they haven't submitted anything formally yet. So they're working on it. They're both works in project process, but no official correspondence yet. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, anything else from the town board? I, I, I think... did see that you. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I did see that you posted for the advisory boards, uh, and so um, just curious. I know. I know. I think we had the same applicants interested. But I, I didn't know if you heard anything else on that. Um, I haven't yet. I was going to follow up with Rhonda next week when she's back in the office because they all went to her. Uh, so I'll I'll shoot you an email with all of the 
uh, applicants that we have once she gets back and we can schedule some interviews and get those vacant seats filled. Yeah. And so one of, uh, one of those seats is a voting member. Yep. Um, I, th I think we're down, we're down two alternates and one member. So we have eight people on our nine member board. So we need to get that filled as soon as we can. And I guess the only other report on my end, I think some of you were on that, but they had a, uh, an introductory presentation a couple of weeks ago about another proposed development on ransom at Stony Point, basically in the area behind where the uh, gas station is. They want to put a whole bunch of apartments up back there. Say it again, where it is? Ransom in Stony Point right behind the gas station oh, oh yeah so it okay. would basically go around it would basically if you go there and look at the where the site is there's it's basically just a vacant field and then yeah. there's woods as you get towards majestic woods and all of the all of the space that's open they're basically proposing to turn into apartments wow is it wetlands though it's a good grass and shrubland for lots of birds. I know that. <laughs> oh well. They haven't they haven't made an application to the town yet, but they did, and I, it should be on the YouTube page. They they made a presentation to um, the various board members, just kind of a, a very introductory, high level. Here's what we're looking to do. Thing. So. Okay. All right. I, I now that you said that, I, I did not add that to, um, and I think I have it here. So you just give me a second, um, just so you can kind of see what they're proposing, right? So it's yeah, it's uh, just a two page. Yeah, there's that, and there's the map, right? Yeah, there's this this style housing, and so uh, let me zoom out here. Uh, all of these apartments right here. So. Those of you on here, this is the gas station, right, at Ransom and Stony, and this is the daycare would be right here, right? And so there's driveways, you know, here and here from the gas station. They're proposing driveways here and here. Um, it's very close to this intersection. I know we'll let traffic and safety deal with that, but that's, you know, twice a day, Ransom is backed up for, you know, half a mile. Uh, so, um, that, it, that'll be interesting from that standpoint, but just looking at the habitat, Diane's absolutely right. It's, it's a meadow habitat, um, you know, which, uh, you know, we, we see as, you know, um, very beneficial, um, but, you know, the developer might look at it like it's, it's shovel ready. Um, I, mean, <laughs> I think we need to get the, in there the and convince them that would be valuable to keep some of that. Boy. Uh, the, the one thing that I've seen that is not on here, I, I did see that they're putting a big drainage pond right next to Stony Point in this area here. Got to put it um, somewhere. <laughs> that's, yeah, it's an interesting spot for it. You know, it's just, I feel like that could get the, you know, the salt from the plows. Uh, it's, it's very, you know, very adjacent to the roadway. We'll put it that way. Um, but well, that's uh, similar to this, what they did at Long Road too, with the new business so, box like that. That's yeah. what I mean, the long in the the boulevard there. Yeah, and you, you have um, you got Woods Creek coming across. Uh, you know this area, it, well, in here somewhere. Um, and you know you're talking about the drainage. I know the drainage for the whole you know, school complex goes this way. Um, and so, you know, this is, um, you know, an area that it's a little, little susceptible, I think, um, in terms of both um, traffic and rainwater, uh, you know, at certain times. So um, it's, it's going to be something to take a look at. Uh, did I, I have they like, had their concept plan approved? Did that, no, 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 did not that at all. get any traction? No, okay. they haven't even formally submitted anything. It was really, a, I, they sent those two pages and did a presentation and that was it. Yeah, I saw that that was on January 26th. Um, Sean Hopkins. I don't know if anybody. It's the same attorney that's got the, the Whitehaven one is handling this one. Okay. 
So January 26 was a planning board meeting or town board? No, it was, a meeting it was dedicated to that. Oh, okay. Okay. So it would be on the YouTube. Yep. Okay. Uh, I think, Su I think Suzanne went too. So um, she was there. Yeah, I think we had. And so uh, when she's back in, from vacation next month, maybe we can ask her uh, what, what was said and what the ideas were. And um, it, you know, I, I heard mixed use again, like I keep hearing mixed use. So um, I'm thinking that, you know, this might be another, you know, I don't know what type of mixed use, but um, whether there's storefronts or a restaurant or, or something, I, I, I'm not sure what the mixed use is here. Don't you like how they put the tall trees in their drawing? <laughs> Those aren't going to be there. Yeah, what's with these? <laughs> Trying to make it. We look should hold. We should hold them to this. I mean, if they get back <laughs> towards the the far back there, where it butts up against, you know, like oh, maybe, majestic maybe. woods, there'd be there'd be some of that in the background. But okay, it's actually just roof <laughs> shrubs. They're depicting roof shrubs. Um, <laughs> where, where does this parcel fall in the open space inventory right now? What? How? How does it rank? That's a good question. I can look that up. Um, then, uh, what is the size of this? Because um, hmm. keep going up. I don't know. It's not well. It 12, says 12, it says ten percent of overall site is one point two nine. So it's got to be twelve. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. 12.9 and at plus minus acres <laughs> plus or minus what all right so yeah preliminary not for construction so um let's see i will look it here. up too. 122 units times two 244 Parking spaces required. Retail. Here it is. Retail. 66 spaces required. Office space. 58 spaces required. 368 parking spaces. Yeah, they were doing some first floor. Like the first floor on some of those would be the mixed use and the second would still be apartments, I believe. Yeah. Um, Okay, so uh, this is uh, another development that I'll just put on our weekly update notice, just in case anything uh, happens. But um, I, I haven't, I, I you know, I just got that two pages um, and the concept plan and the, and the meeting that they had, but I haven't seen it go any farther than that. So, where did you find those? Were they on the website? Uh, they, I, I had them in an email. Oh, okay. Um, Got it. So uh, I did send that email to you, um, to the board members. If you remember, I sent out an email asking if any of you could go to the, oh, the yeah, meeting yeah. on January 26th. This would have been attached to that email. So, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. And I was All far right. away at that point. <laughs> I have a question, uh, Tom, but I'm only here. when you're done with, go I'm ahead. Here. Oh, anything else on that one? No. Only when I'm done with what? I, I just have a question for you when you're done talking about the updates. That's all I have. The only other thing I guess I have as an update for you guys is I, I did get approval from the town board to uh, set up a means of access for CAB. Oh, good. Uh, I'm working with Kevin Schoner to develop the easiest way to do it. It sounds like the easiest way is to do something similar to what I had already done with the OneDrive, where we can create a folder on our system and give access to all of the members via by creating a OneDrive to that folder. So then everybody would have access to it, whether you were in town hall or not. So. Uh, 
definitely got the green light to do it. We're just working on identifying the most efficient and uh, safest way to do it. So as soon as I get the details ironed out, I'll let everybody know because I may just need to confirm email addresses if you want to put OneDrive so that everybody has access, but we're working on it. Thank you. That's what I was going to ask about. Oh. Yeah, um, no, we're on it. We're just trying to figure out the best way to do it. So, and there, so it would be something that exists within the system in town hall. Yeah. So it would we, exist we, within our we, system, but we'd also be able to grant privileges to the members okay. of the town board to access it remotely. And it would so just we, be that one file. So it wouldn't would even great. need to be, you'd have to be sitting at the computer in town hall. You'd just be able to access it from wherever. That would be wonderful. And we could put some of the archive information in it too. Yep. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Tom. You got it. Okay. Um, you know, I uh, uh, additional news announcements. I just, so you, you guys may have um, been hearing the news about the, um, the train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. Yes. Um, a lot of New Yorkers um, are taking that very seriously as it's like, you know, uh, you know, our winds go from, you know, south, southwest to northeast. And that's kind of, you know, um, around there, we're talking about vinyl chloride, vinyl chloride, and known carcinogen. Um, I just wanted to read this from you. I got this. I actually uh, talked with one of the uh, people within the DEC about this, and then they issued an official statement um, saying that the DEC takes impacts on state air quality very seriously, including those that occur outside of New York State with the potential for impacts within the state borders. The DEC is coordinating with the US EPA to monitor any potential impacts to New York State from the derailment and fire in Ohio, which was approximately 90 miles south southwest of New York's border with Pennsylvania. No human health impacts have been reported at this time. Uh, since the East Palestine fire, DEC meteorologists and air quality experts have been closely monitoring information uh, about the fire and airflow patterns to determine if there was uh, potential for currents to impact New York State air quality or cause the deposition of particles from the train fire into New York communities. DEC experts are also analyzing samples being taken from the DEC ambient air monitoring stations to identify any potential air quality anomalies. I think there's one in Chictawaga along the 90 throughway. If you guys see that uh, right along the side of the throughway, uh, no anomalies have been detected at this time and monitoring is ongoing. Deposition of particles can result from a number of factors, including industrial and transportation emission sources, forest fires, dust storms, and other localized conditions, both uh, within and beyond New York's borders. Residents concerned about any unusual particles recently observed uh, can provide DEC with a detailed report and conditions, including photos or other evidence by calling the New York State Spill Hotline and DEC will take the appropriate actions. Public drinking water sources in New York State are rigorously, rigorously and continuously monitored to ensure that they uh, are protective of public health. No New York State drinking water uh, impacts from the Ohio incident have been reported to the DEC. Information about public health drinking water, can you can find this on New York uh, State Departments of Health. Uh, website. Uh, in addition, New Yorkers with health questions about air pollutants, you can always call um, the New York State Department of Health Bureau of Toxic Substances and Assessments. And, you know, this was, um, this was their official statement. And I think that there were some people who definitely were concerned. So I thought I would um, just add that into our meeting, um, just so everybody's aware. It, it, it is in the Ohio River watershed. It's not in the Great Lakes watershed. So the water goes that way, which hopefully that, you know, it stays out of our water, but there's always the possibility with, you know, changing air currents and stuff like that. Um, but um, it, it was um, just so you know, it was, a, it was a very toxic substance. Um, and uh, you know, uh, these train derailments uh, you, you would like to think that they don't have happen often unless you do research and you find out that it's not quite uncommon. Um, for trains to go off the rails and and if there's toxic substances uh, on some of these trains they do not have to be reported because this train was 150 cars long and there was only five cars of toxic substances if there's five or less per 100 cars then it's not considered to be a you know hazardous material train and so there's all these interesting rules that are coming 
up because of that, but it's, it's kind of close to home. So I just wanted to, to make, make sure that you guys were aware and uh, our community is aware that right now it seems like New York state is doing all the testing that they can to have our uh, best interest in mind, make sure everything's safe. Um, but if you have any questions or concerns, um, you know, the, the DEC or the Department of Health, um, they're the guys you want to let know. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, thank you. I was trying to look that up earlier. So that's a, a really uh, solid answer to the questions I had. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully nothing like this happens close to us. Um, you know, you see rail yards. I see them, you know, driving, uh, you know, when you go towards Tiff Street, there's a big rail yard and Chicktawaga, there's big rail yards. And so um, this is shedding light on, you know, these these toxic containers, which, you know, hey, we have we have the I-190 crossing Grand Island. Uh, you know, there could be trucks of who knows what crossing the yeah. island every single day. Um, I think this is not necessarily, I mean, when you talk to people, they'll say it's an inevitability. And so, you know, my concern is like, you know, are we prepared for it happening locally? Because it seems like the people um, and um, uh, the, the governments around, you know, East Palestine, Ohio, we're not ready for this, um, you know, type of event. And so I hope that if this were to happen on Grand Island, we would be a little bit more ready for it. Well, what needs to happen is the the regulations need to be changed, and I think that there is talk about about that going on. But the regulations you were talking about, with how many you know toxic substances permitted per car per how many cars, that kind of stuff needs to be changed. Agreed. Um, and you know, uh, just kind of continuing on with additional news announcements. Um, uh, I had a, uh, a team from Grand Island um, uh, go to the, uh, this Environmental Ambassador Summit, which was at Lindy Corporation, which was formerly Praxair, um, where they got to um, learn about different environmental careers, and um, they got to uh, propose uh, their own environmental project uh, to a panel of judges. And so they came away with a lot of experience, and I thought it was a great event. Um, I know Michelle Lockett from Parks uh, played a big role in that. And, um, you know, thank you to her and for everybody who has set that up and, and got that going. I, I thought the students had a, had a great time and it was, um, uh, it was very exciting to see. Mm -hmm. I think I could add, too, that there was a wonderful birding festival this past weekend. It went on for a few days birds on the Niagara and it was they had so many wonderful programs and walks and it was very successful so great event and they had four days of fishing seminars up in Niagara Falls in the convention center so we were all busy with environmental stuff okay so, uh, that that was that was really good too a lot of good things going on Awesome. I, I do have an interesting one, though. Um, while I was at, up there at the convention center, they had a table that said, save our drinking water. And they were trying to have people sign petitions to stop windmills in Lake Erie. And I didn't quite figure out how that came together, so I stopped and asked. And they were saying, basically... Eventually, as those blades are turning, they're full of transmission fluid or something or rather hydraulic fluid, I guess. And, you know, eventually that stuff leaks. So that would leak into the water. And they were concerned about vibrations in the water. So, and also about if they were building them, they would have to dig up the bottom, which contains contaminants. So it was uh, very interesting seeing the sign. It was like, how is a windmill hurting our drinking water? But, but stopping by and listening to the people, it was, was kind of interesting. interesting. Well, it's apparently also killing whales out in the Atlantic Ocean, right? Um, I mean, off of the 
um, New England coast there. There's a lot of protests going on right now. Wind kills whales, um, which again, you know, you'd have to have someone explain how those dots are connected. But it, there's a lot of interesting opposition coming up right now to to the wind farms. The funny thing is, I've seen some articles on the opposite for fishing because it creates like mini reefs out into the lake or the yeah. ocean and mm -hmm. things congregate oh, around the reefs so the fishing has gotten better um so it's it's very interesting you know there's usually two sides to a story mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's just something to keep our ears open to to, to see what might happen now, obviously there's no nothing Grand Island can do proper because they would be in the lake, but of course, whatever's in the lake flows by us and that's our drinking water, right? So just, right. just thought. So I got. All right. Uh, it would be, it would be great to get somebody to like, who, uh, was educated about this this kind of thing to come talk at one of our meetings. I feel like um, there's a lot to these industries and how they operate, and you know, um, you know, the there's always inherent risk involved in everything. You know, even driving a car, but you wonder what you know the the, the risks are, and you know, you know, do the the what what is the risk analysis do the benefits out, outweigh the risks and you know what are we talking about um uh you know and so i would i think these are really good points and i think that i would like to learn more about those and if we can educate ourselves a little bit about them um that would be fantastic i don't know who to talk to about that kind of stuff though um engineers <laughs> Jeff, right, so, I think I, I think I grabbed the lady's card. Um, I I didn't talk to her very long, but um, I, I might have I might have her card for it's some grassroots organization that was doing it. So you would hear strongly that side of the equation. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure you wouldn't hear the other side um, necessarily about what measures they would take to prevent things like that. But based on what Jeff is saying, we we might be able to invite, you know, different sides on different meeting nights. You know, have that have a representative from that group come one, one month and then the next month have someone speak to the, you know, for the for the the wind, the windmill folks or something. I think that would be interesting. Um, uh, just pa pass along the information to me, uh, email, or you can text it to me, Paul, and I'll see. Um, I'll, you know, I, I, I kind of want to, you know, make it fair and balanced too. I want to see, um, you know, what the issues are. Um, we all know that, you know, the birds, you know, with the wind turbines, uh, yeah. you know, you just see the the pile. <laughs> You know, they don't know that that big thing's whipping around. And so it does, cause, it, you know, there, it's not without risk, but um, it, it would be interesting to talk about it in an environment where that's not charged, where we all can just be educated about it and and um, learn. So um, I think that that would be a, that would be a good thing to do if we don't have a lot of developers at that point uh, coming into our meetings. I have a feeling once we get to the end of spring, we're going to be. Um, talking with some developers, at least it, it looks like. Uh, so uh, anybody else have any additional news announcements? All right, I'll take, take your silence as an absolutely not. All right, so um, let's see. Uh, so what's the protocol here, Tom? Do I need do we, do we need to vote to adjourn or can I just adjourn? <laughs> you can because just adjourn, we do, I guess. We, we have, we have four people, so I feel like I can just uh, adjourn <laughs> this meeting. So uh, we'll bring the meeting to a close. It is 8.34 p.m. So I think that'll end our meeting for tonight. Thank you, everybody, for coming.